Welcome. If you're looking to convert a UMAT to a VUMAT or you're familiar with writing a UMAT and are tackling VUMAT for the first time, this video is for you. We'll break down six critical differences between these two subroutines that you need to know before you dive in. One, naming conventions. The parameter naming conventions differ between UMAT and VUMAT. For example, in UMAT, the stress tensor array is named stress, both input and output, while in VUMAT, the input stress is stress old and the output is stress new. The strain tensor in UMAT is called STRAN, but this array doesn't exist in VUMAT. The strain increment in UMAT is STRAN, while in VUMAT it's referred to as STRAN inc. In UMAT, state variables are named STATEF, both input and output, but in VUMAT, they are split into state old, input, and state new, output. 2. Shear strain definition. UMAT uses engineering shear strains, while VUMAT uses tensor shear strains. It's important to account for the factor of two difference between these two definitions when relating stress and strain. 3. Order of symmetric tensors. Symmetric tensors like stress and strain are stored in arrays with up to six components in both UMAT and VUMAT. However, the order of the components is different, the last two, which are switched in VUMAT. This means adjustments in the stiffness matrix for anisotropic materials are necessary. 4. Block in VUMAT. In UMAT, the subroutine is called once per material point whereas in VUMAT, it processes a group of material points in one call. Therefore, you will often encounter arrays within block dimension, representing the number of material points being updated simultaneously. 5. Shape of non-symmetric tensors For non-symmetric tensors like the deformation gradient, UMAT stores them as matrices, while VUMAT uses a one-column array. The order of components in VUMAT follows this structure, which you'll need to consider. 6. Jacobian matrix In UMAT, the Jacobian matrix is crucial for the subroutine. However, in VUMAT, there's no need for a Jacobian. This makes VUMAT significantly simpler to code. Why? It all comes down to the difference between explicit and implicit algorithms, which we've covered in detail in our previous videos. By understanding these six differences, you'll have a smoother transition from writing UMAT to VUMAT. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below. Also, be sure to visit our website for more related products and resources. Thanks for watching, and have a great day!